Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you. When I told the pastor I want to talk about a healthy living, and then the pastor said, "Okay." I'm not. I'm not a person that can preach in front of everybody, but I always think about, "Oh, I'm just telling a story." You know, that's how I can conquer my fears. You know, 150 years ago, on September 5th, 1866, James and Anna White, along with other church pioneers, opened the Western Health Reform Institute in Battle Creek, Michigan. That's signaling the beginning of the Seventh-day Adventist Church's rich legacy of health ministries. This year, I took the test. I said, I told the pastor I want to be the health ministry person to lead out the health ministry because it's a passion of mine. I always wanted to do it because, because of my running background. I learned a lot of healthy eating or other stuff, exercise, and this helps me a lot. Before I continue what I need to do, uh, about my sermon, I want you, I want you to watch a video. Around the world, across continents and cultures, if there's one hope shared by all humanity, it's to be helped when we are sick and hurting. But for so much of the world, hope and reality are far apart. 1.2 billion people in the world have no access to health care. That's nearly 20% of humanity. Close to 40% of health care is provided by faith-based organizations. One of those faith groups is an American-born religion, the Seventh-day Adventists. A conservative strand of Christianity, Adventists are grounded in the Bible, anticipate the near end of the world, and like Jews, place great importance in the Saturday Sabbath. Adventists also believe the body is the temple of God, something sacred to be cared for, and that has prompted them to build pioneering hospitals to perform breakthrough medical procedures and to promote a healthy lifestyle that has made them some of the longest living people on the planet, with Adventists living seven up to ten years longer than others. There are Adventist hospitals and clinics scattered throughout the world, the fruit of more than a century of missionary outreach to bring their religion and their health story to the far reaches of the globe. So the Mission Hospital is the pioneer of the modern medical system in multiple countries around the world. This is the worst flood in the documented history of the Amazon. You do as much good as you can for as many people, but you can't save everyone. Where to start? We have seen medical missionaries as heroes. It's because we all need healing. We can support medicine and support healing even if we have no religious faith ourselves. It's a universal human need. Adventists have a long tradition of uh, promoting healthy living. Since 150 years ago, and it stood the test until today, the desire is to follow Christ's example of healthy living, of promoting health to people by going through the hospital, clinics, or doctor office by teaching healthy living classes, by providing health and medical services. Many groups refer Adventists as an example of benefits of healthy living. In the Newsweek article,
Come on. Let me move to the. Okay, let's read about this. Uh, John 10, verse t- uh, chapter 10, verse 10. It said, "I have come that you may have life, and that they may have bl- they have made it more abundantly." Jesus came to give us life, so that we can have more of it. Which. Go forward or backward? Just keep pulling. Keep pulling. Oh, pulling it. In the news, in the Newsweek articles, eleven habits to live to a hundred years old. The author Deborah Cross. She lists the key principle of a healthy living. His, and she said. In order to achieve the healthy and long life, and one of the recommendations is to live like a Seventh-day Adventist. Aren't you proud to be a Seventh-day Adventist? And she also said that Seventh-day Adventists have have an average life of expectancy of 89, about a decade longer than the average American. You know, we believe that our body is the temple of God. Because our body is on loan from God, so that's why that's why we need to keep our body in good health. We don't smoke, we don't drink, we don't eat too much sweets, and we exercise and healthy diets, and we focus family and community services. And another, and Jesus said, "This thing doesn't." <laughs> it's just go back and forth. Okay, here you go. Another that um, in the article of uh, National Geographic, the order uh, then Burnett. He visited Lomarinda. You know, Lomarinda is where all the Adventists, you know, our Adventist members live. They congregated the same area. And then Buna went over there. He did, he did a study on Adventist health habits. The, uh, he wrote an article in the National, National Geographic they called Blue Zone, where, where they study the people uh, measurably measure the, why they live uh, the longevity in their area. So he spent time studying the people over the members over at the Loma Linda, and then he, he found he also rec- uh, he, he found that their lifestyle and then uh, their lifestyle is different from the general public. So he said that the Blue Zone he stated that study result has shown that as a group they currently lead the U.S. in longest life expectancy. Many, many groups pointed out that Seventh-day Adventist Church do the right thing, been promoting health ministries to everybody, not just within the church members, it's to the communities. A healthy long life isn't just about quantity of years, it's also about quality of years. The pastors of the, uh, the senior pastors of the Sunny Side Seventh day Adventist Church. And he said, uh, over at uh, Oregon, uh, Portland, Oregon, he said, the point of aspiring to wellness is not simply to live longer, but to serve God more effectively. It's also an issue of quality of life. Who wants to live a long time if they are sick and miserable for the last 20 and 30 years of their lives? Would you? 
Here are the recommendations of the long, healthy life. The pre key principles are listed by the Health Ministry Department of the North American Divisions. God dwells within us, and we are His temple. It is a privilege to keep His temple body in good health, so God can better work in us and through us, so we can become all that God wants us to be. First Corinthians six nineteen twenty says, "Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit?" Who lives in you, and was given to you by God? You must honor, you must honor God with your body. Do you want to keep your body in good health? Yes, we all want to keep our body in good health. The second, the second, uh, the second, uh, the second principle, key principles. We are free to choose. God does not work. God does not work by force, but rather by invitation and personal choice. Healthy living principles both encourage for all, but are not mandated, but are an, an individual's choice. Galatians six five said, "For we are each responsible." For For our own conduct, healthy living does not make you holier, but rather healthier. Being healthy, of course, has many advantages and enables individuals to be able to better serve others and develop their own spiritual and physical goals. Along with choices. Come with personal responsibilities for our own health. The biblical teaching: Whatever a man sows, he will also reap. Galatians six seven is well illustrated by the choices and consequences people experience with their health. Are you with me? The third. Key principles. Nutrition matters. Yes, Ellen White wrote that. Ellen White said that. Grain, fruits, nuts, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our Creator. These fruits be prepared in a simple manner and natural manner as possible, and yet. Nourishing our body, whole, unrefined, plant-based foods make up a large part of healthy diet. I changed the diet. I changed the breakfast menu for the last how many weeks? I changed it to a completely plant-based diet. I can tell by the look of each person. One person told me that I'm an achy person because I got rid of the aches. Even I don't I don't have aches at home either, and my son got got used to it, not eating aches. And then you can tell, mm, no sugar, mm, no aches. Mm. That's the way. That's the way we are supposed to eat plant-based diet. You know, I know some of you are vegetarians and some of you are vegans, which I congratulate you. I try to eat healthy, but once in a while I have to eat a little bit of meat. You know, there's no, there's nothing wrong. But as long as we keep up with our healthy living, a healthy diet, In First Corinthians、uh, ten thirty first said, therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, you do it for the glory of God. Whatever go inside you, you do it for the glory of God. 
This simple statement has been guiding principle for more than 150 years among the, in our church. Adventists encourage the following principle of healthy living. Eat variety of vegetables and fruits. Chose whole grains, not white bread. Sometimes I see the potlucks. Well, every time I see people buying white bread, I just say, mm. <laughs> Choose whole grains. Whole grains can contain everything. You know, you buy uh, oatmeal, you now eat oatmeal, you have uh, lentils, be- beans, soy, tofu. Okay. I know that some of you don't know how to cook tofu, don't know what to do with tofu. I should have a class just to teach tofu. Okay, Adventists tend to eat a lot of nuts because like a handful of almonds is good for you instead of going grabbing, uh, go and grab a bag of chips. Almond is good for you for a handful when you feel like you, you need something to eat. Go for almonds. Breakfast, let's talk about breakfast. I know we all need to eat breakfast because breakfast is very important for us. Not like you have to, I eat breakfast at home. I don't go to the office and eat breakfast. I know some of you do eat breakfast in the office. You cannot let your body, especially after you get up, you cannot let your body go hungry for that long until you get to the office and purchase breakfast or whatever you eat in the office. There's no, there's not a good start for the beginning of the year. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Please do not skip breakfast. You can skip your dinner, that's fine. You can have a healthy breakfast, a healthy lunch, and skip your dinner. That's what I do every day. Okay, I see a lot of people like to drink the soda. You know, soda contains a lot of sugar. I recommend you to skip the soda. Adventists tend to drink a lot of waters. You know, go for water instead of soda. Okay, this is for Elton. Every time Elton eat breakfast, first thing before he even try it, all you see is just sugar, sugar, sugar. <laughs> a ton of salt. How do you know it's not salty enough for you? Okay, for the fourth principles of healthy living, we were meant to move. We came into this world, we were kicking and screaming as a baby. We were meant to move. Being physically active is an important part of health and can include a variety of activities. Go for a walk, go for biking, go for swimming, Call them go for, go for uh, what's that, tennis. I know some people play golf here. I know some runners here, especially the, 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 the uh, Esther's little kids. I'm trying to chase after them tomorrow. They have, they have five minutes mile pace. <laughs> I, will, I will be huffing and puffing when I, when I, was, when I tried to chase, chase after them. It can be anything. It can be working in the garden. It can be chopping down trees. It can be doing gardening or you know, cleaning the house. We, um, we were meant to move. Don't sit in a chair for too long. Have you noticed when you get up, everything feels so tight? Get up frequently, stretch, and walk around. I know we all work in the office space. No, we all sit in front of the computer, staring at the computer all day long. Get up every so often, go stretch and move. The following statement on a physical activity has given guidance to the church for more than 100 years. When the weather will permit, all who can possibly do so ought to walk in the open air every day, summer and winter, 
This found in, uh, written by uh, Alan G. White. While this concept has been recommended for all members, it has become more valued and adopted within, with time. It has changed. Tobacco, alcohol, and... Can you move to the next? Tobacco, alcohol, and recreational drugs harm our health. This is the thing that we don't do, but this is one of the guiding principles from the health ministry department. I know there are so many things out there, especially those energy drinks. I don't know how many of you actually drink one of those monster or rock star or the other one, Red Bull. Stop, I recommend you stop it. You know why? Because those energy, energy drink is high in ca is caffeinated, very high in content, the high content of caffeinated drink, not just sugar. If you drink more than, if you drink more than four, four cans a day, you are going to be at the hospital, in the hospital. Because and that monster drink or the, the high caffeinated energy drink, you cause your heart what, what we call that the medical term is tachycardia. Cause your heart to pump faster and pass faster, and then your hyperpressure should ride up. That's the reason why we shouldn't drink that, touch, even touch that drink. A healthier, if you feel tired every day, no, the healthier options is to have a good night's sleep or a healthy meal. Here's a, number six. Moderation is the key. What is moderation to you? Some may say, there's nothing to me, moderation. No, moderation to be productive. Uh, moderation is involves avoiding things that are harmful and being sensible in things that are good. In other words, don't overdo it. Or go, to, or go to extremes. Work a healthy amount of hours, but don't be a workaholic. I know some of you love to work like 10 hours there, nine, 9 hours there, 12 hours there. Don't be a workaholic. We Chinese said, you know, Iron Man. Take time for recreation. Eat good foods, but in healthy portions. And be active. Don't overdo it. Don't sit so much, too much. Don't watch TV too much. Hey, kids, this is for the kids, no? Don't watch TV, TV too much. And don't sit in front of the computer and play games for a long time. Moderation keeps life in balance. Don't go to the extremes. Keep your life in a balanced way. Wellness requires rest. God created everything in six days. On the seventh day, he, he gave us 24 hours to rest from sundown to sundown. That's the day for us to recuperate. That's, that's the day for us to put everything aside. For, we can for, forget our work so that we can relax and enjoy ourselves and spend time with him and worship him and spend time with your family and go out to the nature. If you want to go like high, walking, I recommend you to go to Town Lakes. Uh, now they call the Lady Bird Lakes. That's where you see the, the pretty of the lake. Around. No, have you, anyone actually walk around the lake? We need to organize a trip on a Sabbath afternoon to go out there. I guarantee you it's pretty, especially Sunday morning when you go running. Everybody running and then you are running and enjoying, and you enjoy the scenery. Now to be productive and to enjoy good physical and mental health. Everyone needs, uh, needs a period of 
rest and relaxation, as well as adequate amount of sleep. Number eight, a healthy environment is a good ingredient for good health. Some of the way to prevent disease are simple. Wash your hands. Keep your body keep uh, keep your body and clothes clean. Keep kitchen and food preparation area clean and free of germs. And maintain a clean sanitary living area. Helping keep helping keep our environment clean and unpolluted, including the air we breathe, is an essential component of good health for all. Number nine, health involves the whole person. What does that mean, whole person? Adventists believe that physical, mental, social, and spiritual dimensions of life must all work together in a balanced way to achieve optimum health. Amen. Thus, it is important to develop a healthy habits, not just for your body, but also for your mind and spirit. Whole person health includes habits such as limiting stress, developing good coping strategies, being hopeful and optimistic, spending time in prayer and meditations, one sharing in the community, developing good relationships, strengthening family life, showing compassion, and demonstrating love and forgiveness. That's the health involved the whole person. Number 10, regular medical care helps protect health. Do you get regular medical checkup? Even when it seems you have done everything right, it's still possible to break an arm or get an infection or develop a chronic health problem. Getting a regular care, including exam and preventive care checks, is an important aspect of healthy living. This includes regular dental checkups and cleaning. Of course, not all Adventists reach all these high objectives. Not all of them reach all these high objectives. But most of us are committed to living a healthy lifestyle. We all encourage and support others on this journey, maintaining a non judgmental attitude that allows individuals to choose learn and adopt healthier lifestyle as God leads us. As the Bible said, the Lord will give us strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Psalms 29, 11. What the research reviews First, I want to know, have any one of you done any uh, Loma, received any package from Loma Linda and they have this uh, review by two inches thick? I know Lester did it. When uh, he did the first one and the second one came in, I asked him, can you get me a copy of it? I did it halfway, I was done with it. <laughs> because the survey was two inches thick, you know, National Institute of Health funded Loma Linda University to do a research on Seventh-day Adventists to study the health habits of Seventh-day Adventists. They're currently conducting the second, uh, the second uh, study. They gather the information for, of more, more than 90,000 men, members throughout the North America. The earlier studies found that Adventists as a group have less heart disease, lower rates of cancer, 
and live significantly longer than the general populations. Aren't you glad to be a Seventh-day Adventist? You know, being a Seventh-day Adventist, I'm proud to be a Seventh-day Adventist because of all this health research. Because of the health ministry started 150 years ago. The first Adventist health study revealed a number of significant findings. Adventist women live on average 4.4 years longer. And Adventist men live 7.3 years longer than the non-Adventist neighbor. Research also found five lifestyle behaviors among Adventists that increase longevity by 10 years to 10 years. Non-smoking, we don't smoke. We eat a plant-based diet, which I cannot include everybody because, because not everybody eating plant-based diet. But Lomaninda do. Over in Lomaninda, they, they do eat a lot of, there are a lot of vegetarians over there because of the hospital. Eating nuts most days of the week, getting regular physical activities, and maintaining a healthy body weight. And they did the second study, and they're currently still working on the second study. Observe additional health advantages of a primary plant-based diet compared to a non-vegetarian, Adventist vegetarian health. Here are the findings they have. Less obesity. They weigh on average about 30 pounds less than non-vegetarians. Less diabetes. About 55% lower rate. Less hypertension. About 42% lower rate, lower cholesterol level, about 55% lower rate. Less cancer, about half the rate for colon cancer. Less heart disease, of 30 to 50 percent lower rate for heart attacks. Lower non, lower total mortality, a 12 percent lower rates of death from any cause based on the latest research, folks. There is no uh, quick fix for anything. God intended for us to live a healthy lifestyle. The only way can keep, the only thing that can keep us healthy is to change our diets. Reports have shown that seven day Adventists living a healthy habits, lifestyle. Plant-based diets is, I know some of you are trying, trying to change that to a plant-based diet, but some of you are still trying to struggle. Folks, do you want to live a healthy lifestyle so that you so that you will be healthy for the rest of the life. Yeah. Now, some, I see a lot of people carrying the oxygen tank behind. Do you want to live like that? No, I don't. He's still playing his uh, tennis. He wants to be able to play tennis until he is reach 85. I actually met a 93 years old man playing golf. 93 years old, and he looks healthy. John, 70-something years old, he's still playing golf. We were meant to move. You know? We, we have to change our diet. We have, to we have to physically active in order to have a healthy lifestyle. Can you go to the next one? 
I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are yours or are your works, and that my soul know very well. Psalms 139, 14. A report on the longevity of Adventists in the archive of international, internal medicine stated that only about 20% of American men reach 85 years of age or older. Only 20% of American men, means general public, only 20% 20, 20 reach 85 years of age. In Japan, Japan is a country that eat a lot of rice. They don't eat like here in America. They don't eat a lot of greasy french fries and sweet like here in the U.S. No, the, I don't eat that much sweet either. I eat a lot of brown rice at home. Japan, they show up 23.6% that reached 85 years of age. But among Adventists as a whole, 41% reached age 85. And nearly half of vegetarian men reached age 85. That's a big number change. You see the difference between us and the general public? The, gen uh, the National Geographic study in the Blue Zone found that there were 10 times as many people living to be 100 in Loma Melinda. Do you want to be like Loma Linda in this area? These studies highlight many of the health advantages of living the Adventist lifestyle, which has been taught within the church for more than 150 years. Folks, this one came out in this uh, Outlook magazine, uh, the record magazine, just, I just received it. This is what I, what I saw in the, in the back page. It says, celebrating a legacy of Adventist health care. Health ministry started 150 years ago. When this healthy lifestyle idea was first promoted in the church, the germ theory was still not widely unknown, not widely known. People seldom bathed themselves in the, back in the old days. Aspirin was not available back then, and there weren't x-rays, antibiotics, pasteurization, or immunization. Folks, this has proved that these Adventist health teachings have stood the test of time, are in harmony with current evidence-based health research, and have produced a, pe a people with clear health and longevity advantages. Would you like to join me to tackle this healthy living habit? Tomorrow, we will meet at the lake to celebrate Last Move Day at 7.30. I hope you can come a little bit early, but so we can start right at 7.30. We will have a devotion before we start. I want you to join me tomorrow and join the rest of your, of your brothers and sisters to celebrate Let's Move Day. It's a day for us to come out to exercise because this, has, this Let's Move Day is founded by uh, Michelle Obama how many years back and then adopted by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So they set aside the third Sunday in September as, a, as the last move day. I want to see you there tomorrow. Get to know your brothers and sisters and come out and have fun. 
Last year, we had uh, about 80 people show up, and including other, the other church. The kids, again, are uh, competing with the older folks, playing the soccer game. And then some people run a few rounds on the lake. I know uh, Peter said he's going to run two rounds. And then, oh, Carlton is showing up. He's skipping his, uh, his tennis. <laughs> Folks, I'll see you tomorrow. Breakfast will be provided in the morning after you run. I want you to have a good time tomorrow morning. Would, do you want to choose the full life that God planned for us? In Philippians 4, 13 said, He will give us strength if we ask. He is the one who gives us strength. I want to leave you this one, Deuteronomy 30, 19 to 20. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants might live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the link of your days. Amen. Our closing song is I Choose Full Life. It's the theme song from the health ministry department of the North American Division. <laughs>